Okay. Another pretty, uh, pretty good question here. What is the key when you transition from a young agent trying to talk to everyone to switching to building your ideal client profile and acquiring those clients only? I'm reading the chat window. I'm older than dirt. Can you say that again? Okay. What is the key when, when transitioning from a young agent trying to talk to everyone to switching to building your ideal client profile and acquiring those clients only? It's a maturing process. It's all internal. It's your comfort level, your competence. Where do you feel comfortable? I remember when I started, I was told by everybody, you're going to have a clientele five years younger than you and five years older than you. And that 10 year span is going to go through your life the whole time. And that's been, that's pretty much been true. Um, it's, it's all of this. When, when, when you start to get legs, when you start to see the benefit of what you do for someone and their family, remember Will Rogers said to truly measure a man's success is to gauge his family's living conditions five years after he's gone. And if we firmly believe that what we do now, and you see it come to fruition, your body language will change. Your confidence level will change and people will be attracted to that not the product. The product, the what is irrelevant. What it is that we do doesn't matter. Why we do it and how we do it makes more sense than what the hell it is. If everybody knew what it was, there would be no life insurance for sale. It'd all be gone. Uh, let, me, let me give you a little different perspective on that. Um, first of all, I think even young agents, um, and I look, I have recruited hundreds and hundreds over my career. I have been involved with the same number uh, over the years. But I think even young agents need to target where they have what I call natural influence. So even as you start early on, I think you want to find the place as a young person, as I did when I was 21 and 22 years old in this business, where you can have influence, where you can get started, where you can build some momentum. Um, and then I think as you do that for a while, and again, you will discover your, your inspiration in this business, your focus for this business, where you can specialize, where you can, look, I think you have to find that eventually. I think as Tom says, you will mature. It is a maturing process. But I do think that even early on, you say, look, I mean, and I know, look, there's always examples of things that work differently. So I get all that. But I think on the, on the larger scale, as you come into this business as a young person or a new advisor, maybe in your 40s or 50s, and we have a lot of those today, I think you want to find a place where you have natural influence. That means when you talk, they listen. When they phone, you want to talk to them. When you give them advice, they take it, where they're naturally predisposed to speak with you. And I don't care where that is, whether they're people, you know, as Tom would say, 10 years around your age or otherwise but you wanna find the place where you can have influence because you gotta get some traction. You gotta have some success early on. And I think you do have to target and you don't try, and we heard this earlier today too, you don't try to be all things to all people all the time, especially when you start. Pick something you, that inspires you. I talk about icon protocol, inspiration, communication, organization, and numeration. But the inspiration, something has to, drive you to ask the questions, to prospect. Something has to drive you to take the no's. Again, if you don't risk a no, you'll never get a yes. So you've got to be, you have to be inspired. Something you have to believe. And ironically enough, Tom, when I first started, I used to have what I called the Jim Ruta Traveling School of Life Insurance. And I'm thinking, I, will, I did more than 100 cases as, as a 22-year-old. I'm thinking, what the heck? How did that work? It's because I was just telling them, and you said this, Tom, I said, if you just knew what I know, I think you'll do what I did. That's what I did. And I'd say, and here's my stuff. Here's what I did. And people bought yeah. it. And yeah. you know what? Whether they were 25 or 35 or 45, you know what? You can use that. And I love this thing. I think Van, uh, Van does this. He's carting around you know, 29 policies and showing them to people. So do a lot of people. If not that, at least the list of them. So you sell it, but you've got, again, it goes back to your own belief. And, but I think if you have something that you can, that you believe in, that you can sell, that you bought, man, take that to the street and just let people believe what you believe and do what Tom said, look for the believers. What Van says, find the people who line up with me and don't worry about the rest. 
they'll change as Van proves many times over. David? Van, do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> no, not really. I, to, be, to, be honest, <laughs> to be honest with you, um, the way you find out, for me, what it is I love was by trial and error. I, you know, I'm listening to this. And again, I'm remembering back to when I was uh, 16 years struggling to make ends meet. And um, it was very, very hard. I, I hated everybody. I hated having to make the calls. I hated to make the phone calls. I hated to call on the leads. I hated the people when I got there. I hated my company. I hated everything. And so I think some of it starts from you know, what do you like? Do you like math? Do you like uh, te technology? Do you like um, um, people? Uh, do you want to help people? Do you want to serve people? Do you, uh, do you want to build relationships with people? See, you know, I'm listening to some of this stuff. Uh, one of the things that really ticks me off in the industry, just it infuriates me is when people say that you get referrals by asking for them. And uh, I say, I tell agents all the time, if anybody ever says that to you, punch the person in the face. You know, it's violent, you shouldn't do that. I don't mean it that way, but. The way you get, the way you get referrals is by being referable, by being different, by, you know, and I tell everybody, again, I wanted to learn these presentations because I wanted to develop some control. And I'm going to tell everybody here, when I get done giving these five question presentations, and I don't have just one, I have five of them. I have five, five question presentations. So when I meet a certain kind of person, I can adjust. Uh, I, I don't do as well with analytical people, even though I'm a hyper analytical, um, because they want illustrations. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. I'm in a guy's house and he's an electrical engineer and he says, I want to give you a hundred thousand bucks, but I want to see an illustration. I said, uh, well, the interest rate is 3%. Do you have a legal pad? He said, yeah. So I write a hundred thousand at the top of the page. And I go times 0 0.03 end of the first year, you'll have 103,000. I turned it around and said, there's your illustration. <laughs> And he got kind of tipped. He said, you know, what, what the hell is this? And I said, that's your illustration. And he said, uh, no, I want a real illustration. I said, well, then you have to tell me what you think the interest rate will be next year. I don't know what that will be. So this is the only accurate illustration I'm allowed to give you under the law. <laughs> and, and he said, well, I'm, I'm not okay with that. And I said, well, I reached my hand out. He said, thank you very much. So we're not going to be a good fit. And I started to walk out the door. He goes, wait, where the hell are you going? And I said, well, please, I can't do what you want me to do. You're asking me to be something that I'm not, and I just can't do it. He said, sit down. And I said, all I want you to do is give me an illustration. I said, okay, give me another page. I write 100,000 at the top of the page. I go, times 0.03 is 103,000. And he said, well, that's the same thing you gave me on the first one. I said, well, I want to make sure you understand how accurate this illustration is. <laughs> and, and I said, he said, well, I'm not okay with that. And I said, well, thank you very much. I'm, it was nice to meet you. I'm going to leave. And he said, will you stop doing that? And you start getting irritated. He said, what, where the hell are you going? And I said, please understand, you are asking me to do something that I cannot do. If this is not acceptable to you, then we have to part company. And finally, he goes, okay. He's been my customer for geez, 15, 20 years. But what, I, what, you, what Tom and all these people, what Jim teaches, and if you talk to some of the other greats, uh, they'll explain to you is you can't give in who you are. You have to be true to who you are. And so I like to have fun. I'm interested in people. About 75% of my clientele are women. So I read women's magazines, L and, and all of those. I talk to women about their shoes and about their clothes. And I, I don't talk to them. I ask them, I say, you know, do you like this? Do you like this? How can, is, it, is it, you know, nicer to, to um, 
buy a pair of shoes that you got for really cheap, but everything buddy thinks are expensive? Or do you want to really have that really expensive pair of shoes so you can tell everybody how expensive it was? You know, everybody's got their own way. It tells you all kinds of things about them having these conversations. And so what I'm hoping that you all get from this is that the secret, it really is the secret, no matter where you are, I would make you a bet. Everybody who's on this call, if you have existing clientele, here's what I would do. I would get on the phone to Monday and say, hi, this is me. I just saw this, this um, Zoom meeting with David Kinder and Thomas Love and Jim Ruda and Pam Miller. And gosh, they raised some questions that I'm terrified that I haven't asked you. I'm just terrified that I haven't made sure that you know the answers to these questions. Would it be possible that I can come over and visit with you and spend half an hour, 45 minutes and ask you a series of questions? Now, I want you to understand, you guys all think I'm really good. I have a customer in Kohler, Wisconsin, who had $500,000 of stuff with me. And uh, they got to retirement age and they call me on the phone. They say, you know, we're going to, we would like you to make a recommendation. We have five other agents that we're going to look at. And I'm going, what? 500 other agents? How's that possible? I'm your agent. I have all your money. And they said, no, no, we have two and a half million dollars in 401k. And I went, what? I, I have 500,000 bucks of their money and I didn't know anything about it. So this is how I fixed it. I went over there and I said, you know, I really screwed this up real bad. I said, if it's okay, I would really like to take a big, big piece of paper and write down a series of questions that I think you need to answer in order to make the proper decisions for your retirement. Is that okay? And I said, please, will you give me a day? He went home and I wrote 42 questions down, left space for them to answer underneath, took it back to him and I said, now, please don't do this with me here. You two sit at the dining room table. You answer these. And then if you still would like me to help you going forward, call me back. A couple of days later, they called me back and said, we got rid of everybody else. You were asking us questions that nobody else asked us. Don't you see? That's the fun. That's what it is. If you can raise issues that nobody else raises, are you worried about taxes? Are you worried about inflation? Do you want to work on the golf course or do you want to play on the golf course? Uh, do you have enough confidence in your current advisor to give a second opinion? And on and on and on. If you keep asking these questions and that's all you do, people are going to think of you as a resource, as an advocate, as an advisor, not as a salesperson. And they'll beg you to be around them all the time and they'll refer you to everybody because you're asking questions that they know their friends and family and relatives need answers to. And I just I can't help it. Everybody we teach that to, I have 40 agents now that we've started from scratch production that make top of the table. We have 7,000 letters here at home of agents who've doubled and tripled and quadrupled their production. And listen to me very carefully, seven to 30 days, seven to 30 days and all they did was learn eight or 10 really good questions and went out amongst them and started asking the questions and their careers and their lives changed and they had fun. They didn't feel like adversaries and they're making money hand over fist. That's all of you guys, seven to 30 days. And you, you have Jim Ruda, if you, please go to his website, jimruda.com. He puts on information, ideas every single week, tells you stuff. Tom Love, buy everything you can buy from that guy. Jesus, he's, he's amazing. I, I, if, you could, if I could swing this camera and show you my Tom Love section of my library, um, you know, I have a Tom, Tom Hagna, David McNagna, you know, everybody. Uh, so I, I, I love these people, a turn of a phrase, a little twist of a word, and you change your life forever. That's what happened for me. And please listen to me again. These guys make fun of me, but I'm very, I can't wait to get off this call because I'm, this is emotionally exhausting. For me. I, I like to be by myself. I go to the movies by myself. Um, I'm a loner. I'm self-conscious. I used to sit in audiences and watch the greats. 
Tom Hagman, John Savage, and Ben Felder, and Roger Zeter, and Charlie Tremendous Jones. Amazing. And while I was sitting there, I would be saying to myself, I swear to you on my children, there's no way I can do what they're doing. I would be saying that the whole time they were talking. And I'm sure some of you are saying that. And now, this is going to sound arrogant to you, but I'm better than all of them. I went from being a dirt ball, and all it took was uh, deciding which questions I was going to learn conversationally, and I practiced and practiced and practiced so I didn't have to worry about how shy I was. So all of you can do this. This is what I want to close with. This is a learned skill. You can learn how to do this to everybody. And you can do it quickly, not six months, seven to 30 days. And when you practice, you don't practice in the mirror. Pick your hardest customer, people that you think there's no way you can sell them on a bet. And that's who you practice on. And I'll bet you any money, one out of five of them, you'll sell because they've never heard the questions before. And when you get back to your people that you're positive you can sell, you'll be so ridiculously powerful because now it'll be all about them and not about you anymore. And it'll all be about strategies rather than products. And that's the secret. It's really that simple. And we try to make it too complex. It's that simple. 